Hey everyone, today I'm experimenting with a tie-dye soap look and I'll talk a little bit more about the new techniques or new to me techniques I'm using. Um, but first let's start with what I'm doing on screen. I'm adding some titanium dioxide to clear soap. Uh, this is cr uh, premium crystal clear and I, uh, I wanted to get a, the look of tie-dye on a white t-shirt. So this is why I'm starting with a white background. Um, this is a layered soap. Um, I'm just for fun. I'm adding a little bit of mica in there to give it kind of a pearlescent finish because I felt like it. Um, but this, this layered soap is a little different than the ones you've seen me do more recently where I've allowed the layers to be more fluid and break through. This one I'm allowing each layer to solidify completely and then adding hot soap on top, um, above the melting point for me about 10 degrees ab above the melting point um, it's going to vary with your soap um, but uh, that's something you can experiment with if you haven't done layers before um, you want the you want to make sure they stick so the soap needs to be hot enough to stick but not hot enough to completely melt what's underneath it doing very thin layers um, helps it not melt that layer underneath. Um, so there's my white background. I'm just spritzing and letting it set up. I'm going to come in next with kind of a precautionary layer. Um, this is plain old clear soap. The soap has all been fragranced already. Um, but this is a tiny layer. You see I'm even shaking it, uh, sliding it around to make sure it's covered. This is just to protect the white layer so that when I come in later with a, um, a little bit thicker layer of hot clear soap, and it does need to be pretty hot, um, I don't disturb the white. I, it doesn't start melting it because this layer needs to be about a quarter inch thick or so. Maybe uh, it might be a little less than that, but I need wiggle room. I need it to stay fluid for the technique you're about to see me try. This is not a technique I developed. Um, I saw our, uh, a good friend from our soap groups, um, Samantha from the dancing soap dish. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do so. She's great. She's got some excellent designs there and she's an excellent teacher. So I saw her experiment with, um, this cool little tool, which you'll see me pick up in a moment, which is intended for acrylic pores there. I don't know. There might even be other types of art uh, that do that use this there it is but it's for pouring acrylic pores and um, she tried it in some in some single mold soaps um, and I wanted to try it in kind of a slab mold style um, going for the tie-dye look uh, I end up using it a little bit differently than she did just because I'm doing mine in layers and she did hers in a full soap. Uh, but you'll love her tutorial. It's, she's got some beautiful soaps um, that she did from this technique. So um, I didn't know what I was doing with this, so I was really experimenting. I think you'll start to see as I progress and uh, add different colors that uh, the looks get a little bit different. Everything in this uh, technique depends upon the temperature and the amount you're pouring. So both the temperature of the soap that's sitting in kind of a loose layer, the clear part, and the soaps that you're pouring in there, the temperature makes a difference. If you pour the hotter either one of these soaps are, the more the, the soap is going to fan out and spread. Um, which for a tie-dye soap is kind of cool and doesn't really matter. But you might see as I progress here some interesting looks start coming up, which I'll be playing with in the future that goes a little bit beyond tie-dye. And uh, you'll see it a little bit more as we go. But um, for right now, it's doing kind of what I wanted. It's spreading out. You're getting a little bit of a starburst of color in the middle, um, which to me, that's the tie dye part of it is, is that color bursting out from a central place. Um, and 
uh, oh, real quick here. You see me doing this. I'm only showing this once, I think, in the video, these two colors. And that's I'm peeling the excess soap um, out. I did pour. I made larger batches than, than uh, I needed on purpose because I poured some uh, for another project. Uh, but I left the side so that you could see me pull that out because I'm making another soap uh, in the very new future, near future. Actually, I've already made the soap. I just haven't edited the footage yet. But it's another video you'll see coming up soon. And, uh, and you can maybe tie it back in your head to this one. And this is where all the scraps came from. So um, I'm doing one layer, layer at a time using two. Um, and once I use three colors in there. Um, to uh, kind of keep the, the colors separate. I didn't want, let's say, the yellow from this first layer. I didn't want that mixing in with the purple of this of the layer I'm about to pour. So this is kind of why I kept them separate. And I do allow them to um, uh, overlap. And that looks really cool, but it looks cooler that way than if you let it spread into one another. Um, the other reason is that the, the soap just cools off too fast. Um, you'll see as I go, you can only, I can only get about four or five little flowers in before a skin starts developing and gives me a little bit of trouble. Um, I have a few ideas that I'm going to be playing with in the future to fix that. I'm, I try several things here which work for this soap for this moment of what I'm doing because it's a tie-dye soap and it's a little bit more forgiving because tie-dye designs are a little bit uh, loose and free. You can't quite perfectly control when you're making a tie-dye t-shirt. I don't know if you've ever made one, but they are a lot of fun, but you can't quite control everything perfectly unless maybe you're a professional tie-dye soap or tie-dye t-shirt maker. Um, either way, I, I get it done for this soap, um, but I have some thoughts of some things to try in the future. I, I, I think I'm a little addicted to experimenting right now. That seems to be something on my mind a lot. I'm just trying, trying new things. Um, I didn't mention that the colorants I'm using, I'm not going to list each color right now, but basically they're every neon pigment from Mad Micah's because uh, I was going for that neon tie-dye look. Um, guess that's probably a little bit more 80s of an 80s tie-dye. I know those were, um, that was kind of popular 80s and early 90s, um, at least where I was. And that's what it makes me think of a little bit, um, are those bright neon tie-dye shirts. I'm pretty sure I'm spritzing these off a little bit because they were a little hotter than I wanted to pour them and you'll see it gives a little bit of a different effect but as it starts cooling um, it gives some really interesting um, different effects uh, I won't spoil it but it really does something very interesting um, so these first first two spread pretty far and they give to me a real tie-dye look because they um, they streak a little bit um, and I'm not sure if it was because the colored soap was hotter or if it was the base. Um, I mean, it came from the same bucket. I don't know if you've noticed, but I color, I melt and color, or even if I mentioned it earlier, I melt and color a whole pitcher of soap, not color, melt and fragrance a whole pitcher of soap and then pour off as I need. And then I'll reheat that bucket if I need to, if it starts cooling off too much. I do frequently cover with a um, little piece of saran wrap to help hold the heat in, and that does help. Um, oh, so this first one, see how, see the smaller amount I'm pouring this? I don't know if you can tell the difference. Before I was filling up the top, uh, the tool to the top, the cone that it pours through, I was filling it all the way. Now I'm barely putting a stream in there. Um, and it just gets a really cool effect. Um, here's the one where it starts streaking out. So I think the amount is just as important as the heat, honestly. Um, there, I filled, I overfilled it a little. I, when I say I was spilling soap, 
basically what I'm talking about is that I'm spilling it over the edge of the cone. It's a very tiny little cone to pour in and I don't have great aim. Um, I think I'm going to have better aim in the future because I just got some little teeny tiny cups to play with rather than these larger pitchers. Usually I do pretty well with those pitchers, but I'm usually also not aiming for a tool. So um, I'm looking forward to experimenting with those soon. You'll, uh, you'll see that as well. See there, I spilled over the edge again. I did <laughs> but look how it's streaking out. I think it looks, um, by the time it's finished moving in there, it really starts looking like tie-dye colors or tie-dye bands and patterns to me. Um, they're the, they're the, uh, little thin sheet layer across the top start. You, maybe you saw it. It's stuck to the tool because it's going to start cooling and it will stick to whatever touches it, the, um, little skin that it makes on top. But see how far, so this is why I think it's still, the colored soap seems to be hotter because it's not cooling at all. It's kind of skirting underneath that, um, that layer, that thin layer, the uh, skin of soap. Um, back to what I was kind of rambling on about a minute ago. Oh yeah, this one was really hard to get out. Um, the, the first one I poured, I poured such a tiny amount. It stays in kind of a floral shape, which made me totally switch my thinking when I'm doing this. And I'm like, what am I making a flower soap now? What am I doing? So I kind of stuck with the idea of doing uh, a tie dye soap, but then it, you know, it just has some flower kind of designs in there. Um, but I do want to play with that flower idea later and do a soap that is mostly flowers. I think you'll see, um, at the end of this, when, when we unmask the whole thing, it has a very watercolor look to it. It looks, uh, to me like watercolor flowers, um, that, that type of look, um, which I could have just as easily probably named it that and gotten away with it. But I really wanted to stick with a tie dye theme since that's what I was going for. Um, but I still don't, I still think it looks like that if that's what's on your mind. Um, it's one of those things that can be influenced by the, by what you name it. Um, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> whatever it is at the end, I think you'll really like it. I did. I'm very proud of this soap and I'm very grateful to Samantha for sharing that tool with me and well, not with just with me, with everybody who's on her channel. Um, it, it's, it's cool. It's really cool and it's fun to play with. And I'm looking forward to trying some more designs. I do want to try some with just flowers and see if I can get accomplish that. That means I'll have to stop spilling on the outside edge of it for sure. And really make sure I can control the amount that I'm pouring. Um, it, it, uh, I'm not super coordinated sometimes when it comes to things like that. So, uh, I think those little cups will help me a lot. But this one even ends up looking like a flower, kind of a different style. They, they, some of them spread out more and the edges tend to, um, get a little, oh, what's jagged, I guess is the, the right word. And it looks more like a petunia or something to me when it, when it fully, spreads out. Um, a cool effect I noticed is that if I'm starting a new fresh plume of color, um, if I start with a color that I didn't just finish with, I don't know if that makes sense. If I start with, like say here, I've been using pink and orange. If I start with pink and the last color I poured was orange, but I'm starting a new flower, the, the color from bef from the last pour comes through and makes a really pretty little outline and you, you don't see it a lot, but you see it enough to where it shows. I think that's really cool. And I definitely plan on using that to my advantage in the future. Uh, something I did in between each of these layers that you won't see me do on camera was clean the tool. And all I did is while the soap layer was setting up, because again, I wanted it to fully set up so I didn't disturb any of the flowers when I poured the next layer is, um, I just put it in a little cup of hot water and let it sit there and then ran some, ran some water on it and then spritzed it down with, um, with alcohol to, uh, 
sanitize. These, uh, this little, <laughs> this little trick here I'm adding, and it's really not a trick, but just a little um, design element I was adding. Um, I literally just dripping soap off the stick. So I mean, there's nothing complicated about it. I was in looking at the the number of flowers that I was able to pour per layer and um, looking at the amount of white that I wanted to cover. And I was just thinking it's going to need a little something else in some spots. I didn't want any spot to look bare. I also didn't want any any particular soap to be all one color type or, or color family. So I kind of wanted to spread that around. Um, if I'd really been thinking about it, I would have gone back and done a little bit more of that with some of the cooler colors. Um, but I didn't. So, because I thought of it as I was doing this layer. Um, I, it came out really neat. I think it adds to kind of the watercolor effect of it. And again, with with um, the reason I still think it works as a tie-dye soap is that, uh, again, tie-dye is not perfect. You'll find little weird splotches and um, little streaks here and there that aren't necessarily attached to where the rubber bands were. It's just part of the, the look. Um, so this is, I forget what, which layer I'm on here. I stopped counting. But this is one of my favorite layers because this is the first time I got up the nerve to try three colors. Um, I just really wanted to. That was uh, like, I think that's Cheesy Poof and then Brazen Hussy is this one. And I can't remember the name of this pink. It's the, it's the more purple-ish of the two pinks that are in the Mad Micah's Neon Neons. The other one is, I think it's whatever... It's not Pretty Kitty. <laughs> Whatever the other one is, that's what this is. I just can't think of the name of it right now. This flower that I just poured, that little bit of orange, that's a really good example of what I was talking about with a little outline. Uh, because I had poured pink in the last flower in the center when I started the orange, it gave me an outline. I think it looks so cool. Um, yeah, they look really beautiful uh, as flowers. So yeah, it kind of evolved from a tie-dye soap to a floral watercolor soap, even though I'm still calling it tie-dye. And I spilled again. Here's the cool thing about this, though. It works every time. Even if I'm spilling, it still looks really neat and still looks like either a tie-dye soap or, or watercolor painting. Um, so, I mean, this is, I love soaps like this where perfection isn't necessary for it to be beautiful. Um, that's so true in most, wow, that was a big spill. In most forms of art, I find that's true anyway. It's, uh, it's an expression and it's what you like. If you're, if you're pouring a soap like this or you want to try something like this, you might use completely different colors from me and, and you might pour way loads more or less, um, and you might spill like I do, or you might just fling soap in there like I did. Um, and nothing looks wrong. The biggest thing uh, that looked like it could be a mistake still worked to me. And that was the bubbles that I got from pulling that tool up. I did find that as it started to set up a little bit more, if I, if I shook just gently, shook the tool a tiny bit, and then used one of the tools that I'm using to like splatter some soap on. Um, if I use one of those little tools to kind of just scrape a little bit, help it come off as I'm pulling up on the tool, that was helpful. I might have used a knife once or twice to do that too, a little tiny knife that I have, I don't remember. But, um, but it is possible to pull it up out of that as the skin is setting up. It's just not ideal. I'm gonna, I wanna play with the idea of a heat gun to maybe just, just barely touch the edges um, of that area I'm working on if and see if it lets go of the skin a little easier without disturbing anything. I may be very sorry that I do that, but um, we'll find out someday soon. Um, for this soap, this is, this is it. That's all I add except for a clear layer over the top. Any type, time I'm doing a heavily layered soap like this with a lot of design, I like to end with a clear layer. It just gives it a glass finish um, and I think rounds it off very well. Um, I, the reason I turned it around is because I wasn't positive that my table was fully, um, 
level. And I thought just in case it was starting to get too full on one side, I thought I'll just turn it around and that clear layer can kind of make up for that because there was definitely a clear layer all the way across. But if, if it needed to be a little heavier on the clear on one side, it would make up for it. But I don't think it was. I think it was fairly level. I was just paranoid about it. Um, so it's done. It's out. Um, the colors you see here are pretty much what the colors are. It's, it's a little, it's a little, um, not foggy, eh, a little fuzzy in the picture. Uh, but at the, at the uh, end, uh, Dell comes in and adjusts the camera a little bit for me so that when I bring them up close, you can really get a good look at it. In, the only reason I'm mentioning the colors is because in the pictures I took in my light box, for some reason, my camera um, really hates neons. I think I mentioned this before in, in another one I did, um, but it just, I don't, didn't want to pick up the colors very well. So even trying to get a clear picture without a really dark gray background, um, the, the colors ended up to be a little bit more intense than they than they are in real life. So I, that's, that's not like me trying to deceive anyone. I That's why I'm trying to point it out now. So when you see the others, you're not thinking, oh, she's really adding some color there in Photoshop. Uh, I was just trying to get a clear, good picture of the soap. But this is pretty close to what they look like. I will say this, it probably has a touch of a shade more green because that yellow is... Um, the tennis ball breaker. I'm not sure if you know what that looks like, but it's a true neon yellow that has a real, that has that little hint of green to it. So uh, that may be where it's a little off as well. Um, but they have that, it, it's like a watercolor effect. Uh, cutting, I speak, I sped it up a little more than the first part of the video just because I'm terrible at cutting and it, I take too long and it gets really boring for anybody watching. So these are the, well, almost the final product. You'll see in a minute, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bevel them. There, the camera's fixed. Thank you, Del. Um, yeah, I, be I will bevel a couple of them after I show them all to you. And that's basically the finished product. And then I will uh, show you some from the light box and you'll see the difference in color. Um, I don't know why I felt like I really needed to mention that, but I did. So there you go. Um, I hope this um, is something you'll try. And if you do, please tag me. Let me know. This was super fun. As you will find out, if you stick with me, I really love trying new things and experimenting with design. I love art. I love everything about art. And this form of art is my absolute favorite. I love the clarity. I love being able to layer with uh, clear soap, uh, I think I've mentioned that before in the Nebula soaps. I like that dimension. It's important to me. Um, okay, so here we go. Here are the soaps in the light box. Now that first soap in front, that is the true color. The ones behind got that darker hue to them. More intensity, a little bit more... Um, oh gosh, I can't think of the word but more intense colors, basically. Um, this is it. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this and I hope you got something from it. Please let me know in the comments if you think you might try this soap or let me know if you have any questions about it. Was it confusing? Because I am rambling on quite a bit. I tend to do that. So uh, let me know what you think. And uh, as always, I hope that I can help you to become a better soaper. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.